Hello, math humans. We're going to do 1.4b today. We're going to be talking more about continuity. Our objectives are that we're going to continue our work with continuity, and then we're going to talk about the intermediate value theorem. This is going to be one of those theorems that you're going to need to add to your formula sheet to make sure that you have that information. So let's just jump right in with our first example, and it says discuss the continuity. So remember yesterday we talked a lot about you need to make sure that you answer the specific question that's asked. Therefore, if, you talk, if they say discuss the continuity, you have to make a statement about where the function is continuous. Your function is going to be f of x is equal to x plus the sine of x. So remember, back from pre-calc, if I have a function that is a composition of two functions, then the domain of the composition is where those two overlap. So let's look at the domain, oops, I spelled it wrong, of f of x is equal to x. Well, this one is all real numbers, because that's just the cute little line that goes like that. Then the domain of the sine of x, remember that the sine of x starts and does this, it's an oscillating periodic function, it's a really crappy graph, but the domain of this is also all real numbers. So therefore, the range or the domain of the composition is all real numbers. So if I need to discuss the continuity, then I would say f of x is continuous for all x, and then I could put all real numbers. I could also say f of x is continuous spelled it wrong, over its domain, but then remember you also have to state the domain. You can't make assumptions. All right, next example, again it's going to say discuss the continuity and this particular function is going to be f of x is equal to the tangent of x. Remember that the tangent of x, so the period is pi, and the asymptotes occur at half of the period. So then this is 3 pi over 2, and then this would be 2 pi. So my graph would look like this, and that would be two periods. <clears throat> so the function, the tangent of x, is discontinuous at the odd multiple of pi over 2. But remember, I have to answer the specific question that's asked, and they ask me to discuss continuity. So I would say f of x is continuous everywhere except, keyword, when x is an odd multiple, whose spelling is tough today, of pi over 2. Alrighty, so it's very, very important that you always answer the question that's asked. So in this particular question, they ask us about continuity. Alright, example number 3 is again going to say discuss the continuity. And our function is going to be f of x is equal to the sine of 1 over x for x doesn't equal 0. And then it's going to equal 0 when x is equal to 0. So I'm going to break this and consider each piece separately. So remember that the sine of 1 over x as x approaches 0, is going to be an oscillating function. And remember that because it's an oscillating function, the limit of the function as x approaches 0 does not exist. And remember, a definition of continuity is that the, the limit of the function has to exist. And then for the second piece down here, it's just the, 
the function f of x is equal to 0. So it's going to be your x-axis, but it's defined only for x is equal to 0. So basically that means I have a point on my graph. So then without graphing, doing this mathematically, I can say f of x is continuous over the domain, and the domain is going to be a negative infinity to 0 unioned with 0 to positive infinity. So let's go back and talk about what the graph looks like. So this is the graph of y equals 0. Remember that the graph of the oscillating function approached something like this, and then it looked like that. This one was undefined as x approaches 0. This one is defined as x approaches 0. Therefore, the only place that the function is continuous is at 0. Okay? I could also have said f of x is. Um, actually, I think the way I said it was sufficient. So we'll just leave it at that and not confuse anybody, especially me. All right. The next thing that we want to talk about is the intermediate value theorem. And it's actually a really very handy theorem. We often talk about it as IVT. And so when you are using it as justification for your math, it is appropriate to write the initials IVT. So you want, that means that you need to add this to your formula sheet. So basically, here's what it says. If I'm given a function over a closed interval, and then, so that means, let's say my closed interval is A to B, and there is a sign change between F of A and F of B, then there's at least one zero, which means it's also an x-intercept in the interval from A to B. Okay, and it's easier, I think, if I illustrate this. So we'll do that with an example. Let's do example four, and I'm just going to illustrate the intermediate value theorem. So it says, use the intermediate value theorem to show that f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x minus 1 has a 0 in the interval from 0 to 1. Now, I could get out my handy-dandy grapher, and I could just graph this, and I could find the 0. But that's not what they want you to show. So I'm going to evaluate the function at 0, and I'm going to get a negative 1. And if I evaluate the function at 1, 1 cubed plus 2 minus 1 is going to be 2. So let's look at this. This is a negative, so that means that it's less than 0. And this is a positive, which means it's greater than 0. So by the intermediate value theorem, because there is a sign change in the interval, that means that f of x has a 0 in the interval. Okay. So I would say, therefore, in the interval 0 to 1, and my work is part of my justification, f of x has a 0. Now let me explain it to you graphically, if I can pick up my paper. So if we graph that function, it would look something like this. So what they say, f of 1 was 2, so this is 2, this is 1. The function's going to do something like this, okay? And we wanted the interval from 0 to 1, right? So here's 0, here's 1. So when we said f of 0, it was negative. So here's the negative value, right? Crappy drawing. And then f of 1 is a positive value. So f of 0 was less than 0. f of 1 was greater than 0. 
And somewhere in that interval, it didn't ask us to find the zero. It just says, is there a zero? So that's what the intermediate value theorem does. The IVT is called an existence theorem. And it just tells you that in the interval from A to B, you potentially have a zero. And that's it. But it is a very important concept that you will need to make sure that you add to your note sheet. Alrighty, that is it for today.